outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. Dune is an American epic science fiction film by Quebec director Denis Villeneuve. The movie is based upon the 1965 novel of the same name, written by American author Frank Herbert. The costumes are co-designed by Jacqueline West and Bob Morgan. Now, I just saw Dune Part 1 yesterday, and I wanted to give you a quick review of the movie while it's still fresh in my mind. I'll be doing more dedicated videos as we lead up to the U.S. theatrical release on October 22nd. Warning, there will be mild spoilers, but I won't give away any major plot points. Now, broadly speaking, the movie is cinematic and sweeping with gorgeous visuals, soundtrack, and a talented cast. I had mentioned in my Armour video that Denis Villeneuve was possibly inspired by the brutalist movement of the 1950s like he was with Blade Runner 2049. You can see the influence here in the production design, in the buildings, the spaceships, and even some of the costumes like the Atreides armor. Now, costume-wise, there weren't really any surprises. We pretty much got it all in the trailers and the studio images, but now we have it here with some context. To be honest, it doesn't feel like it could be thousands of years in the future. It has more of an expanse vibe with that story set just 200 years in the future. With Denny Villeneuve remaining true to the source material, however, perhaps in the 1960s, Frank Herbert himself could not imagine what clothes would look like that far ahead. Now, the costumes of House Atreides are minimal and clean, from their dress uniforms to their working uniforms, and even their armor is simple. You can check out my two dedicated videos on those if you want to learn more. Co-designer Bob Morgan said in an interview, Caledon is this very rich, lush, wet place, and the colors influence the colors we used and the richness of the fabrics we used. In an exterior scene, Paul and Leto don these black, perhaps dark green greatcoats over their uniforms worn with black leather gauntlets. They have these nice leather strap details on the collar that I fancied. I do foresee that fashion designers will be emulating this style and we will be seeing these types of men's jackets coming to a store near you. The Atreides wear armor at one point and I don't think there was a need for it and story-wise it made no sense to me. Now, as for the central female figure, Lady Jessica's costumes are a standout. When she is in the public eye, she is in full-on dress with her handmaidens close behind in matching costumes. For instance, her blue gown worn on Caledon and her beautifully lit yellow gold dress worn when she arrives on Arrakis. But when she is backstage, so to speak, her clothing is very simple. Almost pious, I think, is what they were going for. There are many influences here, I believe, some Asian, Bedouin, and even Hocatur. Paul Atreides wears an outfit at the beginning that looks like it came directly off of the runway. But the thing I loved was that Rebecca Ferguson, who is incredibly riveting in this role, wore no makeup, no visible makeup, and kept her hair slicked back. It was a wonderful contrast to the heavy 80s makeup and severe hairstyle worn by Francesca Annis from Dune 1984. But don't get me wrong, I adored her costumes. Now in one pivotal scene, Lady Jessica wears a gown almost exactly like Princess Leia's iconic costume in Star Wars, but in black. The hood, which she wore both up and down, was draped nearly the same way as the one designed by John Mollo. I'm not trying to criticize it, but that's just my observation. In terms of the groupings and houses, the Spacing Guild and the Bene Gesserit are otherworldly, and I would have liked to have seen a bit more from the Guild. Total Film said that the black dresses of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood were drawn from tarot cards. There was one scene that featured the Reverend Mother and the Bene Gesserit that was just beautiful. Bob Morgan said that there were three kinds of diametrically opposed places in their climate, and then the people that inhabited them, which meant three armies, three different things that we had to do. I'd have to see the movie again, but except for a few key characters, in most cases, the Harkonnen and the Sardaukur are faceless drones. 
The Harkonnens are all in black. It's a bit of a trope. In the book, their house color is blue. Jacqueline West said, The Harkonnens were goss, they were very dark and evil. Actor Dave Bautista, who plays Count Glossu Rabin Harkonnen, told Total Film, Their skin is lifeless, they don't have hair, they live in the dark. I almost felt like Denis was more obsessed with the tone and feel and the look of the Harkonnens than any other thing in that film. And I'm not sure what to make of the Baron. I'm still pondering this, but I will get to this in a future video. The one thing that did confuse me is that in the book, the Sardaukur, the elite military force of the Padishah Emperor, are supposed to be dressed in Harkonnen uniforms to catch the Atreides off guard. But here, they are in pale gray and white uniforms similar to the description of them in the book. It was a bit too close to the color and silhouette of the Fremen still suit, so at times I didn't think there was enough contrast. If they were going to go this way, it would have been much better, in my humble opinion, to have them in another color. Too much concrete color, Denis. According to the costume designer's interview with Total Film, the Sardaukar mirrored the SS, a major parliamentary organization under Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. I don't see it. Now, the Fremen still suits look great. I think this was the most successful costume, and I bought into them the way they are explained in the story. Costume designer Jacqueline West said, As Frank Herbert described, the still suit was the color of rocks. I had the head of locations bring me back rocks, different files of sand of different colors from Jordan where we shot it. The rock was this incredible color, a very kind of dusty black charcoal with some brown in it. The Fremen, Paul, and Jessica also wrapped themselves in gauze in every which way they could to protect themselves from the heat and the sand. Wes said, And I thought gauze shifts like sand does, and I had it dyed in all these desert sand colors. So that became the palette, and it's just how the desert looks there. There's all these colors, beautiful salmon color and a dark rust, and a kind of pale gray beige. So despite my quibbles, and in the grand scheme of things, they are small, I think that the costume design was a monumental achievement. Doom Part 1 will likely win all of the awards, and it deserves it, and I'm excited to see this movie again on the big screen. Let me know in the comments section if you are excited to see it. I will have more Dune dedicated videos coming to the channel, so consider subscribing if you want to receive a notification when I post a new video. Thank you for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.